We are all works in progress. Even the successful women you see owning it on Instagram face stumbling blocks along the way and continue to work hard to stay at the top of their game. In this series, we're sitting down with the people that inspire us to find out how they do it. And what is success really like? This is getting there. Dr. Ayana Elizabeth Johnson and Dr. Catherine K. Wilkinson are on a mission to bring more women to the forefront of the climate change movement, a field that has long been dominated by white men. Last fall, the pair released an anthology they edited called All We Can Save, featuring essays from a varied group of experts with diverse perspectives. All We Can Save has since attracted attention from outside the scientific community, and its audiobook is even voiced by Hollywood celebrities like Jane Fonda, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, America Ferreira and Sophia Bush. Here's how they're building a movement and why they say women are so necessary to the climate movement. TMRW, Ayana, you wear many hats as a marine biologist, podcast host and writer. How did you get your start in the climate world, Ayana Johnson, I like this version of the question, because I get asked all the time, like, how did you become a marine biologist, with just, you know, it's the same answer as every other kid who thinks the ocean is really cool. But, there's no way to do ocean conservation work without realizing that it's all happening in the context of the climate crisis. And so it was just a slow and steady expansion from trying to figure out what sustainable fishing looked like in Caribbean island nations to thinking about ocean policy at the US federal level and then realizing that there's a limit to how much you can accomplish if you're just thinking locally. That local work is still critical, of course, but I realized there was an opportunity to be one of the people who was helping to connect those dots between the imperatives for ocean conservation, and being one of the people who's raising her hand and saying, don't forget about the ocean, in every climate meeting. Catherine, you're also an author, teacher, and former editor-in-chief of Project Drawdown a non-profit coalition of researchers and scientists working on climate change solutions. How did you get your start in the climate world, Catherine Wilkinson? I got sort of politicized around environmental issues broadly in high school and kind of carried that student activism into my undergraduate years. And I remember at some point, I want to say, maybe my second year or so in college, I realized that if I wanted to work on environmental issues, that probably meant working on climate change. I learned a lot from a friend of mine in college, Billy Parrish, who really got the youth climate movement going. He was kind of my entry point. What brought you two together, Wilkinson, technically, we first met on Twitter. And, you know, I was like, Johnson, a very modern story. Wilkinson, this woman seems extremely cool. And then a mutual friend, a colleague in the ocean climate overlap world sent us an email and said, you two need to meet. And we hopped on a phone call together. It's very 21st century, and that was late 2018. And there was sort of an unusual opportunity on the table to cure it and lead a retreat at this incredible ranch in Montana. And I'd had this notion of, could we get a bunch of women in climate together for community and scheming and dreaming that's hard to do alone. And Ayana, she was like, well, I am in and I will help you do that. Let's fire up a spreadsheet and get going. You say on the All We Can Save website that it's very much a men's world. How did you find this community of women leaders who are ready to break down barriers? Johnson, Catherine and I were looking around and seeing so much remarkable work happening. That women were leading in these creative ways, forming interesting collaborations, working outside of institutions and just sort of doing what needed to be done often without nearly enough resources behind them. So when I met Catherine and saw her TED talk about exactly this, the need to include an eye to the gender as we work on addressing the climate crisis, I started to think about what that would mean. And once you start looking around and you notice the incredible work that's going on, that's being done by women that's either underappreciated, underfunded, underrecognized, it just seems like such a waste not to figure out how to further bolster those efforts. How would you describe the All We Can Save project and its purpose, Johnson, it's born out of, this need for gender equality within climate work and the understanding that if we do not deliberately include women, especially women of color, not just as participants, but as leaders, then we won't succeed. We need the biggest, strongest team and we also just need so many more leaders. 
Catherine has described the climate crisis as a leadership crisis. And that's not just the lack of diversity in the leaders right now, but the fact that we need so many more leaders. We're talking about a moment of radical transformation that's needed in terms of our electricity and transportation and buildings and manufacturing and agriculture and land use and all of that, which means we need leaders in every community, in every sector, leading this transition. And so what we're trying to do is advocate for gender equality within climate work, and welcome as many people in as possible, and see if there are things we can do to help them find their place in this work. Wilkinson, Elizabeth Yam Peer, who is a longtime climate justice activist and leader, talks about the need for a leaderful movement. And I love that I term, because I think it gives you that sense of abundance and a mosaic that we need in terms of climate leadership. I think about all we can save sometimes as a kaleidoscope, where you can sort of keep turning it right to see things slightly differently, to have kind of new insights and new openings. And I think a leaderful movement takes the power of a kaleidoscope and just makes it so much bigger. Johnson, and that term is also used in the movement for black lives. And it's been, of course, remarkable to see how that principle of advocating for a leaderful approach has really played out in their work in these beautiful ways. What's your response to challenges from doubters and climate change deniers? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.